Was a proper investigation performed that might have revealed the use of accelerants or explosives in World Trade Center 7's destruction? My name is Stephen Jones, a physicist. I received my uh, PhD in physics from Vanderbilt University in 1978, so I've been at this for over 30 years, studying various uh, subjects. I have published over 50 peer-reviewed papers in my career. NIST concedes that they found no evidence for explosives. So then we asked them, well, did you look? And they said, no, we did not look for explosives <laughs> or residues of explosives. I'm Ron Brookman, licensed structural engineer in California, and I received my master's degree in structural engineering from University of California at Davis in 1986. I've been practicing structural engineering uh, ever since then. NIST never did a, a proper evaluation of the, uh, the collapse site and the debris. World Trade Center 7 uh, I would have expected they would have tested for explosives also because of the nature of the collapse and the unprecedented nature of a steel-framed high-rise building collapsing in such a fashion. My name is Roland Angle. I'm a civil engineer registered in the state of California. I've been practicing in California since 1967. I'm a graduate of the University of California and my practice has included, among other things, design and testing of uh, structures that were designed to withstand blasts. Specifically, for instance, the uh, launch facilities for the Minuteman missile system. I was a Green Beret for six years during the 60s. I was trained uh, in the use of demolitions, and I blew a lot of things up. One of the things that we did was uh, go out and attack structures, analyze them as to where their weak points were, uh, learn how to place explosives at points that would uh, cause them to fail, and uh, then actually uh, demolish them and analyze our results. So th the method of how to attack a structure and cause it to fail with explosives was one of the things that I learned uh, through my military training. Well, the American Society of Civil Engineers was brought into this investigation early on. Uh, they did a very uh, superficial investigation of the site. Uh, they issued a report without any significant forensic examination, and there were laws violated in the uh, destruction of that evidence. And for the American Society of Civil Engineers to ignore those events is extremely disturbing and uh, is a violation, in my opinion, of their professional code of ethics. I'm Tony Zambodi. I'm a mechanical engineer from the Philadelphia area with over 20 years of experience in the aerospace industry where I design structures for aircraft and spacecraft and support equipment. Neither NIST or FEMA followed standard protocol for fire and explosion investigations, or just fire investigations for that matter. National Fire Protection Association Guide Number 921 calls for saving the evidence and being prepared to, be, to justify why you wouldn't. It also calls for testing for accelerants and explosives when high order damage is involved. NIST did not do this. NIST is often responsible for generating information which the NFPA guides are written from. It makes one wonder why the NFPA standard would not be followed in this case. This has not answered this question publicly. There's national standards that need to be followed. And when I started looking into that, I went into the investigation manual. And so it's called the NFPA 921, and it's the fire and explosion. It's the guide for fire and explosions, investigations. And so what it is, it's a national standard. So if an investigator from New York has to come out to the West Coast to help with something, they can fit right in seamlessly into the system and know where the, what the role is and what they need to be doing. And so I went and I got the manual from 2001. And I went back and I looked at the footage from the original days there were all kinds of firefighters and, and civilians that were reporting explosions. Okay, all right. Here, hold on. You want to call, you, you call your mother or something? Oh, boy. You hear that? Keep your eye on that building. It'll be coming down. 
Just the fact that there were explosions means they need to be investigated. Terrorists used explosives in 93. We had witnesses to explosions. We have audio recording of explosions. We have overwhelming evidence that there were some explosive events. The manual gets into thermite, and if it says if you have melted steel or concrete, which we had on 9-11, and there's videos of it, people can see it, we should test for it. It says when you have melted steel or concrete, you test for thermite. So the fact that they're not testing for it is, is crazy. We had 3,000 you know, Americans murdered, and we had the first three high-rise and steel collapses. We have all these reports of explosions. We have the vans pulled over. We have the history of terrorists using explosives. It's absolutely ridiculous that they, I mean, there's no excuse for it. It's criminal, in my opinion. It's absolutely criminal that they refuse to follow the national standards. And the national standards say that they should be testing that for explosives. One of the other big issues we have, the firefighters that are members of the Firefighters for 11 Truth, is the, just the blatant destruction of evidence. It's, it's, we're not talking about a little bit of evidence. They destroyed all the steel, all the, basically the bones of the building that would have told us how this first high-rise steel structure in history that hadn't been struck by an airplane, all it had was a few fires on several floors, and it had only been burning for a few hours. We've had other high-rises burn much longer. This was The way we could have learned from this was analyzing that, looking at the steel and seeing how this collapsed and how it failed and which steel members did what. Well, we can't do that because what they did immediately after 9-11 was they started removing the steel, the, the debris from Tower 7 and all the towers immediately. Why were they destroying this? I mean, they sent it off to, to China to be recycled. So they never had any physical evidence to do the investigation. The national standards are very clear. We have preservation of evidence. We have spoilation of evidence. There's all kinds of basically standards that you don't destroy evidence. So that's what we're, we're calling for. We're calling for an investigation into the investigators, why they destroyed this. We're calling for a reinvestigation that follows national standards. And the big thing is everybody says this is in the past, leave it in the past, and that's not true. We have ground zero workers dying today. They're getting cancers. And several of them don't have medical insurance. The FDNY, most of them have, are being taken care of by the department, but there were so many thousands of volunteers and members of other departments that showed up, and they were there for months after afterwards and they don't have the medical coverage they they can't make their house payments they're sick and dying and we as a country are ignoring them I and mean, we promised we'd never forget but it looks to me like most people have forgotten and they want us to forget and that's what we're here for is to basically just ask people to take another look into this you know show some compassion and let's help you know our brothers and sisters out and really reinvestigate 9-11 I mean we have it's changed our world it's you know not to mention that there were 343 brothers murdered but we're at war over this we've lost a lot of our freedoms over this and we don't have the real story on what happened because there wasn't a proper investigation done as reported by the new york times Engineers were baffled by the collapse of Building 7. Since no steel frame high-rise has ever completely collapsed due to fire, how are we to understand this mysterious event? My name is Scott Granger. I'm a licensed fire protection engineer. I'm licensed in 13 states. I've been in private practice for 25 years. I've been a practicing engineer for 39 years. 50% of my practice is in forensic engineering. Steel structural frame buildings, high-rise buildings, simply do not collapse due to fire. There has never been until 9-11 an experience where a high-rise building that was steel frame completely collapsed. There have been fires burned longer in similar structures without any collapse. I am Dan Barnum, FAIA. A graduate architect from Rice University with a Bachelor of Architecture degree. For the 40 plus years that I've been practicing architecture, I've designed a variety of buildings from small houses to high-rise office buildings. Some of the high-rises that I've worked on are one shell and two shell here in Houston, and I was project manager for a 22-story office building in Akron, Ohio. I'm a fellow of the American Institute of Architects. I've designed high-rise buildings and I know what, what they do in fires because I've studied that. Later in the day when uh, World Trade Center 7 collapsed, they had already showed us pictures of, of a few fires in that building and I mean they weren't even raging. And, and how could that cause a building to collapse as if it were imploded? Couldn't happen. 
My name is Jonathan Smolens, PE. I'm a professional structural engineer in the Boulder, Denver area for the past 12 years. And one of my specialties is forensic engineering, including um, evaluation of structures post-disaster. What happened to those columns to, to all collapse at the same time? The explanation provided does not match the evidence that we have. My name is Michael Donley, PE. I'm a structural engineer with 14 years of experience. I get involved mostly with the design of steel-framed fireproof buildings. We've never had a steel-framed skyscraper collapse in the United States or internationally. So there's no precedent. I don't think Building 7 could have collapsed by fire. As NIST tells us that this collapse mechanism, starting with thermal expansion, that worked its way upward and outward through the building in a matter of seconds, there's not enough time for the building to collapse the way that NIST tells us it collapsed. I'm uh, Ed Moniak, uh, licensed fire protection engineer uh, for the at least 25 years, and uh, I work for a number of uh, organizations, uh, city, uh, federal, uh, large insurance companies, uh, consultant, uh, always in the area of fire safety and uh, with the goal of keeping uh, the public safe and uh, first responders safe. I became uh, fascinated with the government's uh, version of the, uh, the events on 9-11 on because this was totally contrary to everything that I've ever experienced, either working in the field of fire safety or knowing what I know about uh, mechanical engineering. It, it, it defies uh, many fundamentals of mechanics and materials and physics and uh, just many fundamental engineering concepts. World Trade Center 7, this claims the fires were very large, very hot and long lasting, when in reality, observation, which has been researched by many people, shows these fires did, were, did not last very long. They were not in the locations where NIST claims they were at given times. So